Steve Gilbert from UK, more precise from Scotland. That's what I've learned. Never be imprecise with Scottish people. He is national lead clinician for chronic pain in Scotland and will discuss the issue of pain as vital sign number five. Thanks. Thanks very much. Well, thank you very much for inviting me here today and, uh, and the wait uh, has made me more and more nervous as I've been uh, uh, delayed, so uh, I'll, I'll try and settle down. Uh, sometimes when I get nervous and excited about things, I can speed up and become incomprehensible, so shout at me if, if you can't understand what I'm saying. Um, so I've got to talk about uh, pain as the, the fifth vital sign, and um, I think it's a very interesting subject. Uh, I think that uh, I was uh, corresponding also with Lorimer Mosley, who was uh, going to be talking about pain as a disease, and, uh, and so I didn't want to cross over too much with him, uh, and now he's not come, so I'll maybe mention some of the things that I was talking to him about. Um, I don't have anything to disclose, uh, any financial interests, uh, and I work with uh, Healthcare Improvement Scotland and the Scottish Government, uh, as well as being an anaesthetist and pain doctor in Fife in Scotland. So um, uh, I found a, a good Scottish quote about uh, Measurement. Um, it's, a, it's a method that in, in the dictionary definition. It's a method of determining a quantity or a capacity or a dimension, uh, and basically we make up the, the measurement. To uh, and, and as long as it's agreed among specialists, then we can we can count it as a measurement. But um, Lord Kelvin, who I was counting as a, a very famous Scotsman, but actually found out earlier on today that he was born in Belfast and he's not Scottish at all, uh, although he did work at Glasgow University. Um, he, he said, but when you can't measure it, when you can't express it in numbers, then your knowledge is of a meagre and unsatisfactory kind. And he was the origin of, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. So um, a, a bit of a daunting uh, uh, judgment. So how can we measure pain? Uh, what can we measure? Why do we want to measure it? what next, and then I'm hoping to leave a fair bit of time for discussion because I, I hope I'm going to annoy you and uh, set off some contradictory thoughts in your minds. So um, there's basically three ways of measuring pain, uh, a physical response to a stimulus, and uh, the doll was developed in the 1950s to quantify pain measurement, the just noticeable difference between uh, stimulus uh, and the maximum tolerated uh, stimulus. Uh, and questionnaires, there's lots of questionnaires, and I'll, I'll come back to all these in a wee minute. And then there's self-report, visual analog scales, verbal and numerical rating uh, scales, and, uh, and the DOLA test from Denmark. Um, so physical, if you uh, look at what people are, uh, are measuring, and they're trying not to do any harm to their subjects, then they'll burn them with a, a laser to see how much pain they can evoke. Uh, or they might uh, get their, to put their arm in an ice bath, uh, or uh, they could use uh, pressure, uh, usually not in a, a damaging way like this, but a, a gentle pressure. And then, of course, uh, another way of, uh, of measuring uh, pain or, or uh, get, getting a, a, a reproducible st stimulus is using electrical stimulation. Um, I thought this is quite amusing. Uh, in fact, uh, one of my colleagues is working with a, a, a very interesting little device called the Pain Matcher, uh, which is, uh, doesn't give you such a lethal electrical shock as the electric chair. You just hold on to electrodes, and you can match the amount of pain that is generated by the electrical current with what your uh, feeling of the pain is. But, of course, it's not really uh, a, a, a true measure of the pain because uh, you know, you've got control of holding on to the electrodes, uh, whereas your pain that you're suffering you might well not have uh, as good control over. So that's a... Um, uh, physical measurements, and, uh, and more recently, uh, of course, there's been a lot of interest in measuring the amount of brain activity or the amount of blood flow on the functional MRI scans. Um, and uh, I remember Patrick Wall giving a, a lecture about this. Uh, about, it was about 1999 at the World Congress. It was a very uh, entertaining lecture where he was talking about all these areas lighting up um, in the, uh, the amygdala. Sorry, I can't figure out the pointer, but. Uh, and so on, um, all these areas lighting up, uh, which he'd been studying 20 years previously uh, with SPECT scanning. Uh, he said, but we weren't looking at pain, we were looking at thirst. Uh, so uh, very interesting, and uh, he termed the, the sort of, this study as functional MRI phrenology. Um, and uh, in this case, we're seeing all the areas lighting up in, ye oh, yes, let's see, in yellow, 
uh, is not people suffering pain, but actually people looking at uh, sexually exciting images. So I'm not going to show you those, don't worry. Um, so uh, that's not a measure either. Um, we've got lots and lots of questionnaires, and um, uh, we've got the sort of general uh, pain intensity and character, like the McGill uh, questionnaire, the short form. Uh, we've got the brief pain inventory, which gives the amount of pain and amount, uh, amount of interference. Uh, and then we've got measures of uh, specific conditions like the back pain scores, uh, illness behaviour, uh, um, other measures of uh, anxiety and depression, fear, uh, and um, pain catastrophizing. And then we've got general quality of life measurements like uh, short form 36 and EQ5D, and then more uh, specific uh, measures like the Roland Mullers, Womack, and, uh, and, and many others. And I think that uh, there's many, many of these questionnaires which um, our patients probably get a bit fed up with filling in, um, although it does give us some useful uh, information. Um, and of course, self-report is uh, um, the pain seems to be levelling off in this version of the slide, so it doesn't go out right up to the maximum, which is good, um, uh, which is the most uh, useful, perhaps, model, uh, model of self uh, reporting and giving a, a measure of the, the pain is what the, uh, what the patient says it is. Um, so uh, lots of studying on this and um, uh, another form of uh, visual analog scale as I was mentioning is the DOLO test which is uh, developed in, uh, in Denmark here and gives a measure of the pain, problems with activities, uh, with the job, with the energy, with your spirit and social life and sleeping. And, and that's available online, so it's maybe uh, a model of a, um, of, of a useful pain measure. Um, there's the impact uh, group, which is really looking at measurement of pain in clinical studies, but um, I think some of their uh, recommendations are quite useful for pain measurement as well. Uh, they recommend the numerical or verbal scale rather than the uh, visual analogue because it's more easy for patients to understand and more uh, often completed. Um, to have a look at uh, physical, fu physical functioning, emotional functioning, and the global impression of change. Uh, symptoms and adverse events uh, is very important uh, to leave patients some flexibility there. And what actually happened to the patient? Uh, did they go back to work? Uh, did they cut down their analgesics as a result of your treatment or, or whatever? Um, so that brings me on to the fifth vital sign, uh, which is what I was meant to be talking about, so I'll get back to that. Uh, it was introduced by the American Pain Society uh, many years ago now and, and really taken up seriously by the Californian uh, Veterans Health Authority in 1999. Um, and then more recently it's been de declared in uh, the World Wide uh, de uh, Declaration of Mont Montreal at the IASP Congress there. And its purpose is really to raise awareness of pain. It's important to check on pain management, pain measurement, as, as well as the, all the other vital signs. So um, the objectives, uh, as stated in the, uh, the pain toolkit produced in California, were to provide a system-wide standard of care for pain management uh, that will reduce suffering, assure the pain assessment and treatment and uh, is a prompt and appropriate, that includes the patient and uh, provides for monitoring. Uh, interdisciplinary multimodal approach and assure that clinics, clinicians are adequately prepared to assess and manage pain effectively. Uh, but I think that one of the worries that I have about pain as a, as a measurement or as a vital sign um, is all of the questions and the uh, surveys and so on are asking how bad is your pain uh, and that obviously has a negative effect on the person who's receiving that question. Uh, and we know that uh, you know, uh, how old are you can make you feel older, uh, and uh, how depressed are you can make you feel more down, how late is it uh, can make you think it's more late. So uh, uh, this is a quote from the toolkit in California saying, uh, the patient saying, I don't really have pain, but I do have aching. Is that pain? And the suggested response from the toolkit is, people experience physical discomfort that they may label as something other than pain, that might include aching, pooling, tightness. Rate this aching experience on the pain scale, and this will help us in making an assessment. And uh, in a way, I think we're directing the patient uh, there to uh, maybe report pain where they have a, 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 another symptom. And uh, in America particularly, there's been quite a bit of a backlash against the vital, vital sign uh, argument um, uh, with articles such as why pain cannot be a vital sign misinterpretation, uh, efficacy and safety of pain management before and after implementation of the hospital-wide pain management standards is safety compromised. 
kindness kilns, written by a surgeon, of course, and um, measuring pain as the fifth vital sign doesn't improve the quality of pain management, and um, that's in Journal of General Internal, Internal Medicine, and that was an objective look at what happened in California after the implementation of the fifth vital sign as a clinical standard. So all that's a little bit uh, unsettling and worrying, and uh, uh, what can we do to, uh, to try and counter that sort of negative pu publicity? Because we don't want to uh, push the f fifth vital sign as a you know, very important thing to, uh, to, to take forward in medicine and then have patients coming to harm or doctors arguing that it's uh, uh, bad medicine. Um, I think that the key is, of course, not just measuring the intensity of the pain, but understanding pain altogether. Um, and I think that uh, we have to focus that understanding at all levels. Uh, and this uh, issue of pain from earlier on this year was excellent at raising public awareness of, uh, of pain. Um, so understanding about the biopsychosocial na nature of pain, we need to get that across to, to people. Um, and uh, believing our patients uh, when they say they have pain, that's the self-report idea, is very, very important and very important for patients. Um, being able to explain the mechanisms of pain to, to patients, I think, is uh, very important. And um, knowing our limits so that we can understand the pain and believe it. But we might be not <clears throat> able to uh, completely reduce the, the pain to zero on a, on a zero to ten uh, scale. So we have to share the decisions with patients then. We have to uh, decide what pain relief would you be happy with? What, how can you live with this pain? Um, and, of course, using common sense, uh, which I always uh, try and remind myself when I start a clinic uh, to, to think about common sense. Um, I looked up the def definition of disease earlier on when we were debating that, and um, the Oxford uh, Dictionary definition is a disorder of structure or function that pr produces specific symptoms, not just a result of in injury. And it could also mean a particular quality or disposition regarded as adversely affecting the person. So an example they gave was that self-deprecation is uh, uh, the English disease. Uh, so um, but sometimes Scots get that as well. Uh, so uh, this is a little pain experiment I did on myself uh, a few weeks ago uh, where I had to cycle from uh, way down at the bottom there, down at sea level, up to more than 2,000 feet. And uh, I was suffering intense pain there, uh, around about 11 out of 10, I think, and uh, particularly cramps. And, uh, but you can see that I was grinning because I knew the photographer was there. And uh, I was quite pleased that I was way ahead of all those guys that are way in the distance there. So pain is all to do with understanding and meaning. Thank you. Have you got any questions? Thank you. Thanks very much. I will never again ask any, any speaker to, to hurry up because so far I thought New York people are the fastest speaking people in the world. Now I know it's Scotch <laughs> people. Thanks very much. Okay, uh, questions? Uh, fifth vital sign, pain. Yeah. Uh, first of all, Stephen, all those other cyclists looked like they were going down the hill. <laughs> They'd already been to the top, haven't they? Um, I just want to say on behalf of charities that represent people in pain that pain's not really a fifth vital sign. For many people, when they go in, it's the first vital sign. It's why they've gone in in the first place. And the, um, the response of the medical prefer, uh, profession that, you know, where they were basically slating something, is, is symptomatic of an approach which says, we'll, we'll try it once, and then forevermore we'll say, oh, we tried that in the 80s. Yeah. And, you know, there, there should be a culture of continual improvement. And for me, the fifth vital sign is just a sign of how the medical profession can improve from the last millennia to this millennia. Um, and it's just wonderful to have people like yourself in post in Scotland um, setting an example for other people to follow. Well, yeah, ho thanks very much. I, I, I hope to be able to set an example. I'm making some slow progress in Scotland. I think I'm the only lead clinician anywhere, uh, and I think it's a very positive thing to have a government appointment to, to help take uh, the improvement in pain services forward. Um, 
I think the vital sign and the disease statements both have uh, really important implications in terms of raising the profile in pain, of pain among the medical profession in general. Um, I, I think that they both have uh, little bits of uh, worry with them, like with the fifth vital sign. If we measure the pain intensity and try and reduce that with medication every time, misunderstanding it as solely a biological problem, then uh, we're going to fail, we're going to cause side effects, and we're going to have a backlash. Uh, and, and similarly, with the disease, <coughs> uh, it originates from dis-ease, uh, from not being at ease. Uh, and so pain is definitely a dis-ease, you know, uh, but uh, we have this connotation of it being to do with damage uh, and danger, uh, which chronic pain isn't always. Uh, and so we have to, as I say, get that understanding across. And uh, Lorimer uh, had a very interesting discussion on his body and mind uh, site. He had Michael Cousins making the uh, declaration of pain as a disease, uh, but then he also had his own blog on pain as a disease, which, which generated a very interesting discussion, uh, which basically didn't conclude. <laughs> okay, any further questions? If not, thanks, thanks again. Thanks very much.